Yeah, uh, you know, obviously these games have always been close games, but to come down here and, and play, um, you know, the kind of football we did today, which was control the line of scrimmage. Uh, they had 38 yards rushing, and and for us to run the football uh, and close out the game with a drive of eight minutes and 20 seconds, virtually running the ball every down, that's, you know, those are the things that you look for. and. Um, you know, a football team that that is emerging uh, as as a contender. So uh, proud of our group, proud of the way they um, prepared uh, for this game, and and certainly when you go on the road and, and win in an SEC uh, venue, um, you know, certainly a lot of things uh, are coming together for our football team. So um, again, proud of the effort, and uh, you know. Game ball went out to uh, Damian Ramos. I, I thought the field goal kicks, you know, while the game was still in balance, um, you know, helped us, you know, stay uh, ahead of it and, and keep the momentum. And again, you know, made some big plays. The West Weeks, you know, obviously uh, deflection and interception apparently was the uh, was the back breaker uh, in the game. So. Great victory. Uh, now we'll get 24 hours to enjoy it, and then we got to get back on the road and and uh, play the um, you know the best team in, in the the SEC right now. The the only team that's other than us undefeated. Um, so uh, another great challenge. Char, can you elaborate on the Whit Weeks play? It seemed to be the turning point in yeah. the game. Then he made a sack right after that as well. Um, it's Whit Weeks. You know he's active, um, and in that situation he was in a uh, a pressure situation where he was blitzing, um, but I think I think what stands out is uh, you know he's he's active in in virtually all of the plays. Uh, you saw a great play that he made coming later in the game down the line of scrimmage uh, on a ball that bounced outside. He just he's a he's an elite player in this league. Wilson, coach, you uh, defense held Arkansas at 277 total yards. What do you think uh, was so? Well, I, I think first and foremost, uh, you know, our guys are, you know, we we, had, we 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 made some mistakes on the first drive. Quite frankly, uh, we had some errors. Um, I think our guys were a little bit distracted uh, emotionally. They they were so charged up. We made some errors. We settled down, and I think what happened after that was guys did their job the way they were supposed to do it when they needed to do it, and that's execution, really. And they executed, they're beginning to execute at a, a much higher level consistently, and it starts with controlling the line of scrimmage. They could not run the ball. They became one-dimensional, and when that happens, we can get after it, and we can get after the quarterback, and we made life difficult for them. Brian, I know zero trophies are handed out now, but for this team to be where it is heading into a, a game like you'll have at A&M next weekend, just how do you just sort of, I guess, encapsulate the growth this team has put in the last several weeks and, and just how has it been able to set this team up for, for what it potentially has in front of it? Yeah, they have not blinked. You know, we lost to Kobe and Gilroy, you know, one of our, if arguably our, our most talented and uh, experienced defensive tackle, then, you know, obviously Harold Perkins, right? And, you know, we haven't had Chris, who's our, you know, vertical threat all year. Um, you know, and, and it just seems these guys just keep, you know, playing, you know, through, you know, and the next man stepping up. Um, nothing seems to phase this group. Uh, whether they're down 17, nothing on the road, um, or, you know, struggling to put together, um, you know, a great drive. Um, they just keep playing, and it's, uh, it's their, to their credit. Now they're playing cleaner, um, and I think that that's a sign of a team that's really coming together. Kyle, was there anything to the all-star penalties? Yeah, we had two, we had three that were double clutches by, by our center, and sometimes that's on the quarterback that he's taken a little bit too much time. You know, I, I think the ownership in that is, is the
the management of the entire offense. You know, we can easily say it was the crowd noise. Sometimes we have to get into a better rhythm and, and that's getting the receivers lined up quicker. I mean, sometimes it's a, it's a, it's a fire drill out there. Um, you know, Garrett is, is getting information. And so, look, all of that together, we got to clean it up because that stuff can't continue to happen. There, there, were, there were more penalties out there than I would like. We'll go back and, and um, you know, we'll look at it more, more closely. But it's not one person. It's, it's the whole management that has to get cleaner. Uh, yeah, Coach, the first time in SEC play, we got to see you guys take a big lead early, sustain it, and then extend on it in the second half. Just what kind of lessons can you learn from this game in particular on you know, building a lead early and then you know, sustaining it throughout well, the Well, just, game? You, know, our, you know, our vision to how do we want to play four quarters of football is to start fast and, and then have just, uh, you know, just, just the, the great kind of focus that, that we had in the second quarter. Um, effort, enthusiasm in the third, which I thought we did with the big turnover, and then, you know, finish strong with an eight-minute-plus drive to to um, to finish this game off. So, I thought we had four quarters of LSU football for the first time, maybe. Yeah, there there's some things around the edges we want to clean up, but you know, when you go on the road and you beat a really good football team, 34 to 10 in the SEC, um, you know, I'd be crying over, you know something that I shouldn't be really right now at this point. We, we shouldn't be taking this one and going. Um, we feel pretty good about it. Chase? Hey, Coach, just um, what was kind of your assessment of how Garrett played today? You know, in the first half, it seemed like he was sort of making some of the same mistakes that he made last week, just kind of throwing things up for grabs. So just, you know, how do you think he bounced back from that, or what was your, your thoughts there? Yeah, I wouldn't characterize him throwing stuff up for grabs. That's lazy, and I think that's an easy way to say somebody that's not – uh, detailed in his work. He's detailed in his work. He doesn't do anything by just throwing it up for grabs. So let's get that straight. Um, he, he may have tried to fit a ball in where um, maybe he should not have, but everything that he does is thoughtful. Everything that he does is, is through hard work. Um, you know, he, he's he's still in, in a process of, you know, getting the receivers on the same page with him. He's, I mean, look, there, there are so many things out there for him to continue to get better at. And the great part about it is he shows up with that kind of attitude every day. So um, I would just I would just say that um, he is still working to be the best version of himself. And uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna continue to see him get better and better. Right. There's been so many wild results in the SEC so far, and everything seems to still be up for grabs. And is there a sense with your team of like, well, why not us? Why can't we be SEC champions this year the way they're playing? I think that that's pretty clear that this group kind of understands that now, um, especially you know with one game. Uh, on the road, and then then we go on a bye week, and then three out of four at Tiger Stadium. So, I think they can now sense that they have put themselves um, in a pretty good position. Now they got to go earn it again on the road, but there's clearly a different way that they perceive the next six weeks. And um, I think by by their standards, they believe they're getting better, and I believe they're getting better each and every week. And this is a good time to get better uh, later in the year. Back. Coach, you mentioned the turnovers uh, and how important they were earlier. Uh, how important is it for those turnovers to kind of continue to happen from this defense going into these next two games? Well, I mean, the, the, you know, our defense, I, I think, you know, if you look at their the things that they're doing, number one, I think they led the SEC in in, uh, in sacks. I mean, we're, we're if not, we're right up there. So we're, we're getting those big plays, and now we're turning those into turnovers. Um, there were some physical hits out there. I mean, we, we jarred the ball loose. I mean, they weren't sloppy, you know, kind of put the ball on the ground. They were physical hits, um, and they were great plays uh, with pressure. So sometimes you make those things happen, and we didn't. 
you know, we didn't luck into those. Th those were those were made with with pressures. We have time for two more, Wilson. Brian, you all talked this week about trying to get the run game going. It certainly seemed like it did tonight. Why do you think that was kind of maybe finally clicked and was successful the way you wanted it to be? Um, I just think that this has been a, a constant um, focus over the last few weeks of really detailing out the things that we believe we do well and, and sticking with it um, and, and being really committed to it. Like we stuck with it, you know, um, and, and quite frankly, we, we got the looks um, this week that allowed us to have a better running game as well. So commitment to it. Um, in preparation, we're spending a lot of time in our preparation during the week on our run game. We, we believe we can throw it as well as anybody. We need to continue to, to, to have this kind of success in the run game. Kyle, Just the, the job the defense has done in the second half of the last two weeks. Yeah. To, you know, I know it's a lot of it's belief, but you know they got to get out there next key too. Just your thoughts on putting it all together? So, absolutely. I mean, I think the biggest thing here is we have we had struggled with the first drive of the third quarters and it's been kind of the way we have set up practices we have talked about um, okay it's third quarter it's the first drive right after kickoff and it's been in the forefront of how we think about now the third quarter and that first drive because it really sets us up because we believe if we can kick our defense off the field at that first drive in the third quarter, good things will happen. So I just, I, I applaud the kids in terms of their mindset and what they believe that they need to get done. And we're coaching to it and they're, they're, they're taking to it. And now we've got to go do it again against a really good Texas A&M team uh, at their place. Um, I know this was homecoming. Um, I'm sure they'll schedule homecoming next week there against us too it just seems like we get everybody's homecoming so maybe next year they'll think about maybe not making us homecoming anymore all right thanks all right, guys thanks. Uh, we'll have players outside